Okay, so that was interesting, right? Um, our Rhino application has some sort of intelligence now. It can speak back to us. Um, but let's go one step further. Let's say that we also want Rhino to create some text actually in the Rhino uh, 3D environment uh, that says hello world also. So we're going to create another comment here that says uh, create hello world text in the modeling viewport. Okay. So now we're actually going to use the Rhino script syntax. So the way to actually start to use all the methods that we are looking at here, that um, the straight alphabetical list is located in this dropdown, and again, the help, Python help menu allows you to get to the actual help interface, which actually is really uh, useful, allows you to browse uh, hierarchically, as well as um, through the uh, index, uh, sort of alphabetical view. And you can also search for uh, different methods that you uh, might not know the name of yet. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add some text into the Rhino viewport. So we're going to say first, to access those methods, we have to type rs dot. This allows us to access all the methods, and again, it's giving us a smart complete. So we'll type add text, open parentheses. Notice that when you do that, down here in the output window, it gives you the help on command. So this is um, the information related to using this particular method, add text. All right, so the rest of the, uh, and these are called arguments, these uh, kind of keys inside of the parentheses. So to call this method, we're gonna, the first argument we have to give it is the actual text we want to use. So I'll do quotes, hello world, just as I did before. Then I'm going to close the quotes, hit comma, and I need to tell it where it's going to exist. So for that, I want it to just be at the origin, right? The origin of my file in XYZ coordinates is just open parentheses, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, close parentheses. Uh, the Python editor is also smart in that once you close a parentheses, it highlights that parentheses and the open parentheses that goes with it, which is a good indicator that you may have missed a close parentheses that goes with the method here. So now um, that that parentheses closes this one and this close parentheses closes this open parentheses. Alright, so let's go ahead and give that a shot. Now at our origin we have a text object that was created that says hello world. Alright, if you wanted to go further with this, um, the add text method has more arguments. So you could start to specify how high, how tall you want your text to be, what font it's in, etc. Right? It's only required that we use the first two. Okay, so we've just written our first script uh, that calls to the Rhino script methods. It uses the command line uh, functionality by using the print method. And we also created some uh, an object in the Rhino viewport, right? So um, in addition to just uh, using kind of words, right, we can start to create objects and manipulate objects inside of Rhino. So let's take a second and uh, address any questions you might have, just in terms of the basic usage of how far we've gotten, right? If you have any questions about Rhino's Python editor or the help window, uh, go ahead and drop those into the questions box, and we'll address them now. Okay, so one question that we got was, is there a way to identify which arguments are required from the help text? And um, I believe the question has to do with this text down here, 
right? Can you tell which one is required? And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see. In this particular view, it doesn't show you which one is required. But if you go to that same method in the help menu, right, I can double click it there in, in order to uh, find the, the Rhino help that goes along with it. And you could also go to um, help, Python help. There, it tells you very specifically. It says that um, the first two parameters or arguments for this method, add text, are required. Right? So we used the first two, which is the text that we wanted to display and the 3D point where the text should uh, exist. All the others say optional. That would be a really good suggestion for the developers of uh, Rhino Python, um, which are over at McNeil. So we're going to talk about the Rhino Python forum uh, near the end, but I would encourage uh, any and all of you who have good suggestions for how the interface could be um, developed or improved to go ahead and add them to the forum. Uh, Steve Baer is the uh, developer at McNeil that's in charge of that project, and he is super helpful and responsive. So I would definitely encourage you to take advantage of the opportunity to, um, to offer those suggestions because they would be very helpful. Uh, great question. Um, anything else? All right, so I think um, we're, we're doing well so far. Okay, so this is your first script. So let's go ahead and save it. And um, we can call this my first script. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be saving um, an instructor version of every file. So we gave you a set of reference files. If we happen to do anything different, um, we'll be uploading the um, files we developed together um, after the conclusion of the webinar. And so you'll have both those, and the originals and the instructor files as a reference. So that's my hello world file. I'll go ahead and close that. Well, let's bounce back to PowerPoint. Okay, so um, we use the Python editor in Rhino to create a, a very simple script, and we actually use the, our little hashtag or pound sign to denote a comment, which is ignored by the computer. Um, and we began to actually um, use a method called pseudocoding, which is not actual coding or programming, but it's pseudocode which is the plain language description of what we want to do and how we're going to do it. So before you script, any anytime, no matter how complex of a script you're trying to produce, you should always pseudocode it first, right? It's very easy to then translate that into the particular uh, syntax of any program that you're using. Um, and especially if you're working collaboratively, pseudocode is extremely important so that you're um, your collaborator understands what exactly you're trying to achieve, and you guys can actually help each other and riff off what you were doing. Okay, so uh, a little bit more information about that editor window. Right, We use the play button, which is also called the debug or start button, and there are another set of icons next to it that allow us to move through our script line by line, or stop, or actually go to the end and finish the script. Um, and another thing that we're going to be using here in the next couple of files is called a breakpoint. Right? That, that means that the script will run to that point and pause for a second. And then once you're ready, you can uh, carry on. Um, but that's going to be really important. And we'll use that breakpoint option by creating a, a little toggle button here on the left side of the window next to the line numbers. Okay. So we just said um, to, to Rhino to tell us hello world, successful, 